their shrinking membership, the number of Americans in unions fell to the lowest level on record last year. 10.7% of workers belong to a union now. This is down from more than 20% in the early 1980s. I want to bring in James Hoffa right now. He is president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. James, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good to be here. So what is your take on the overall decline in union membership? To what would you attribute that? Well, basically, the attack on right to work. Basically, uh, the Republicans have been enacting uh, right to work in Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, West Virginia, and just a week ago uh, in Kentucky. This is all new. This is an attack increasing the basically the lack of bargaining power of people who are in unions right now. So I think these attacks are doing that. But there are good things going on right now. The president talking about you know getting Ford to bring their production back. Those are going to be union jobs, good union jobs. Carrier air conditioning. Those are good union jobs. So there are good things. Even Chrysler is talking about bringing their production back. Those will be union jobs. So I think there's something going on here uh, could be very, very positive with regard to bringing back jobs that have basically left the country, bringing them back here. Those will be union jobs. So, you're, so it sounds like you're supportive of President Trump. I mean, he withdrew the U.S. this week from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. That was a big deal. A lot of CEOs were upset with that. They wanted to be part of the TPP. Why do you support the withdrawal from the TPP? Tell us from a worker standpoint. Well, from the standpoint, this was basically NAFTA on steroids. We know with NAFTA that America has lost over a million jobs. These are good jobs that have gone to Mexico. And this was going to just accelerate that. Jobs would be in, in Brunei and Vietnam and other places. Uh, and we just can't have that. We've seen what happens when we have these agreements. So we applaud the uh, and oppose TPP forever. We oppose fast track. So we applaud president when he basically said we're getting out of TPP. That was a big victory for us and that he'll renegotiate NAFTA. We support him on that. Yeah. Where the president we think is right, we will support him. So, so tell us about that because it's, it's interesting that, you know, the unions could not bring the vote for Hillary Clinton. There were a lot of union members who were watching Donald Trump and saying, you know what, he's saying what we've been saying for 10 years. Well, I've been saying about trade for 20 years. I mean, you know, finally somebody's listening, and I think that's good. I mean, this is a big development, TPP, renegotiate NAFTA. This is what we want to do, and we join him in that, and we'll help him. And that's very, very positive. And we already see that these companies are blinking. They're saying, okay, I'll come back to the United States. I'm glad it's so simple. <laughs> How much influence do you think the unions have with the Democratic Party, uh, James? I mean, I'm reading this op-ed this morning on Chuck Schumer going absolutely wild and ballistic on, on Betsy DeVos. He says this, Betsy DeVos would single-handedly decimate our public education system if she were confirmed. Her plan to privatize education would deprive students from a good public education while helping students from wealthy families get another leg up. Actually, that's not even true because she doesn't oppose public schools. She wants competing models of public education so that the bad schools be get better. But it seems like the Democrats are just trying to stop all of the president's nominees for his cabinet. Well, I think, you know, that's going to be between Congress uh, and, and the president's nominees. But where we, so, we do, we basically support the president where he's out there creating good union jobs. That's what we do. We can't support him on everything, but we know he's doing the right thing with regard to trade, with regard to a number of issues, and where we agree with him, we will support him. So how significant do you think this trade executive order will be on jobs? I mean, what, do you have a number? Do you have an expectation of what we will see when he starts doing these bilateral deals? Well, we don't know what's in those deals, and we don't know what he's going to do, but we hope that he basically focuses on getting these great multinational corporations to come back here. When you read the papers, there's already companies like Apple saying, oh, we're going to spend uh, millions of dollars in the United States. Uh, we're going to start building televisions here. I mean, unheard of what we're, you're reading in the Wall Street Journal and the different trade publications. So these are good developments, and, and I look forward to more and more companies coming back to the United States under the pressure from this administration. Well, it's, it, you scratch your head thinking, how come this hasn't been done uh, in the last... Well, you, you're exactly right. You, why, if it was this simple... All you had to do was say something, and Ford changes their mind. Right. Why didn't we do this before? I agree with you. How about just a little focus on, on the American worker? 
<laughs> just pick up well, the phone. Well, we've been, we've been talking about it for a long time, and that's yeah. our major issue. Bring good a union jobs back to the United States, and that's what's happening. I've got to ask you about the minimum wage, and I've got to ask you about the construction on the Keystone XL pipeline. The president signed this executive order to continue construction on the Keystone XL and the Dakota Access Pipeline. What does that mean for union jobs? Do you think this is going to be good-paying jobs? Thousands of union jobs will be created. We've been talking about this for 10 years or five years at least about basically and unfortunately the administration opposed us on this. But this is another victory where we think this is going to create good union jobs. We know it will create them and we're going ahead and we support the president with regard to the executive order with regard to Keystone and, and, and the Dakota Access. So this is another development. You know, why wasn't this done before? But finally we're on the right track. So when you talk about overall how many people are going to be in unions, it's going to go up because of what we're doing here, bringing jobs back and also basically starting to build pipelines that we need vitally here in this country. Yeah. What about the minimum wage? That's one area where you may differ with the president. Look, he said he doesn't think that the minimum wage is high enough, but he wants to leave it to the states. The states will decide. What do you think? Well, I don't think that's good. I think we have to have leadership here. I think it should be a federal issue. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I, I support $15. Uh, when we talked about $15, everybody said, when they started talking about that, you know, five years ago or three years ago, everybody said, oh, that's ridiculous. And what do we see? We see states across the United States, everybody raising the minimum wage because everybody realizes the minimum wage is way too low and it's starting to go up. My own state of Michigan raised it. All Republicans, and they raised it. It's amazing. Uh, but they're feeling the heat out there. They realize they're on the wrong track. We've got to raise the minimum wage uh, and give people a, a raise. But does it make sense that depending on which state, I mean, maybe the, the minimum wage in New York should not necessarily be the same minimum wage, you know, in, in this small town in the middle of the country where the cost of living is lower? I mean, do you agree that it should be different state for, from state? No, I don't. I think we have to have a national one. You have to show leadership. Okay. Uh, if, if you know, that's what we had before. I mean, there was a na there is a, a national right to work or n national uh, minimum wage. We have to have that, and we should set one across the country. Otherwise, you're going to have everything different. You're going to have certain states like Kansas that won't even increase it. So we've got to make sure we have something that's a national right to work. What should be the number, James? Uh, I like 15. Let's do it. That's our goal. Let's get it there. All right. We'll leave it there. James, good to have you on the program this morning. We so appreciate it. Thank you. James Hoffa, the Teamsters Union president.